For those who wish to help support my work, I've included a donate button in the Dropbox below. For those who don't, enjoy the material, it's all free. I don't want to go get all commercial and tell everybody to ring my bell and subscribe and all that stuff, man. I'm just not really feeling that. But uh, if the donations continue, I will be making a lot more videos. Because it takes a lot of effort to make these things, and that's why I don't make them very often. They're looking at my shift. They're looking at my shift linkage. Yeah, how long has it been like that? 20 years, maybe more. Probably yeah, more. Are these guys following you? Well, we're all oh. kind of leaving together. I think they may have to get there sooner than me. Because no. I have a bungee cord that returns this. <laughs> that returns the That's genius. transmission spring. But well, that spring's like a grenade, man, you know? That thing, you know, you ever had one break? Yeah. Is it noisy? Is the motor noisy today or no? Oh, fuck. Fire it up. Let them hear that. I'm, that's, that's that one. I'll be amazed if it... That's what it's Yeah, like. you don't want to be selling anybody this. Okay, this is Scooter Tramp Scotty, and I'm just gonna show the spot we stayed last night. It's a little bit risque. Um, we're in Georgia, and me and Joe are traveling to Myrtle Beach together from Panama City. And the spot we chose is a little funky. You can see the parking lot here. I'm not sure if I'm holding this thing right. But if you look behind me, you can see what we have is an abandoned strip mall, it appears to be. With that said, let's take a look around the side of the building at the first spot we looked at. Here we are going around the side of the building. The road that goes behind it, let's take a look back there. You can pretty much figure people rarely if ever come back here. I mean, they do, I'm sure. And you see this spot here, right behind the building. It's the road coming in. That place would have worked out just fine. Here was the consideration, okay? First off, I knew the sun was going to come up on this side, so we would have been in the sun. I'm really picky about where I put my camps, kind of. I mean, you may not believe that when you see where we actually put it. <laughs> but the concern here was, is the sun first thing in the morning would wake us up. And you can see that it's there. It's come over these trees. And the other thing is, is something I learned from that if you get under anything, you won't get due. And as you can see, there's nothing to be under back there. We would have woke up with our camps wet in the dew and in the sun, but it would have worked and it is private, okay? There was that consideration, this spot. Okay, as we rode in here when I first started, spotted this building, I could see there's a dirt road over there that goes in and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a fence back there. I don't think it'll show up in this. There's a fence back there. And there's, the motorcycles can easily go around it. And uh, there's a cell tower back there. And there's a dirt road going to it. And that had tr trees for, for shade and to keep the dew off yet. But it was on the dirt. And it's everything's wet here. You can see how green it is. So, you know, if it's not raining, there's going to be dew. And so we would have had to put up on the dirt. And then that gives you dirt and more mosquitoes. Because back in the woods there. So that was another spot. All, all these would have worked. But this is the reasons that we chose them. Those, there's advantages and disadvantages to them. Okay, so I'm going to show you the one we actually did use, which was kind of stupid and kind of ballsy, but nobody's cared. <laughs> so let's go look at that. Okay, as you can see, there's a gas station across the street over there. There's some trucks. And we look across our parking lot. There's a road. It's a pretty heavily used road. And this is my strip mall. What's left of it. I believe this part was a grocery store and this is where we decided to put camp let's go closer and see and the reason for it is as you can see it's right out in the open like gee hope the cops don't bother us but the reason is, is as you can see we have shade this morning 
and you see the over that we have dew coverage from above we have a roof so we woke up dry and uh, in the shade and so we're able to hang out here now Liz HD Liz here is a face well I think I've met her somewhere before but she found out we were in the area and took the morning off and she's coming up here to take us to breakfast so she showed up before I even woke up she got a little time off from work I guess she did a lot of traveling on the shovelhead at one point so she's an interesting development so you see what we got here but if I turn around we are facing the road and the gas stations if the cops showed up, we're legal. Worst they'd have done is told us to move. Say hi to all your fans, Liz. So, we're all going to breakfast. I think we all your fans. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're all going to breakfast, and that is how we chose this spot. Scotty here we are in an abandoned factory and I don't I don't know what they did here at this place but it must have had something to do with tile and I'll show you why you can see it was some kind of a factory as we go in here the place is absolutely full of tile Boxes and boxes of tile, and there's a bunch of different kinds too. I found stuff for the bathrooms in here. Yeah, I don't know. A lot of it's like bathroom tile, and some of it looks like, yeah, a lot of it in here. Just full of it. This place is just wasted, abandoned. Some other stuff, but over there I found some of the small tiles he used for like a bathroom. And I just found it interesting, so I thought I'd shoot it. Joe and I have decided to stop for lunch at this buffet. Here we got place is a big old spread. On and on. Be okay with the life of the homeless here, Joe? I don't know. It's pretty hard, man. Yeah, my heart is bleeding, brother. Yeah. Scooter Champ Scotty. After we're still riding through Georgia, Joe and I together. And uh, we slept in that abandoned strip mall last night. I think there had been a grocery store there. And I was contacted by Liz, HD Liz, and she lived not that far away, and she said she'd come take us to breakfast in the morning. I have some shots of her, but no video, I don't think. And um, so we all went to IHOP, and then we went to the gas station. She filled up our tanks. She's working. Interesting girl, man. She, was, uh, she had a boyfriend in the 70s who had a... She's probably about my age. He had a pan head and they took a lot of trips and then she ended up getting a shovel head and she started taking trips alone. And she's got a whole lot of stories about sleeping in weird places and engines going out and what she did along the way. So she's pretty fascinating. So me and Joe have been traveling all this. That was a great little adventure this morning. So we've been traveling the back roads and I love Georgia. There's a lot of beautiful roads. But it's getting on towards later in the day and we stopped. It's, it's hot and it's humid. It's been pretty hot and it's humid. And so I'm like, well, we're gonna take a shower. So we stopped here at this pilot. And I'm gonna take us around the back. Uh, you can get free showers if you know how. I will include a link 
to a video I made about use the use of truck stops. So you just got to know how to get the showers, and you can easily. The first guy we asked gave us two showers, so I'll show you. Okay, the first thing is we didn't go to the front where the gas pumps are. We came back here to the fuel islands where the truckers fuel, and we parked here. And the first guy I talked to gave us two showers. Here's the shower rooms. Welcome to Pilot. Enjoy it, Doug. Okay, so we just came in here and used these showers. And uh, truck stop gives you towels. They give you a nice shower. Anyways, we're all fresh. And it's later in the day. What is it, about 5 o'clock? 5.30. 5.30. Don't feel like going on. It's still plenty of sunshine. But we're going to find a place nearby, probably stay, go to the grocery store. And uh, that's how our day's gone today. After our showers yesterday evening, it's getting kind of late, I guess 5.30ish. I didn't feel like going on. We'd been riding long enough. It's been a really beautiful ride. I love riding the back roads of Georgia. But uh, after we got showers at this truck stop, still traveling with Joe, I looked back here and I noted, back of the truck stop, I noted this road cruising off. And I run into these now and then. I thought, well, Let's go take a look. If it's any good, maybe we'll just stay here. So let's look down there. The road actually goes down to a few houses, so it's a little bit residential. But I noted, a lot of times there's a road, well sometimes there's a road coming off the back of these truck stops you can just stay on. But I noted this one. There's this little road going off into the sticks here. And of course I stood here and asked Joe, I said, what do you see? I do that a lot. And he did pretty good, and I told him what I see. First off, I see grass growing up the middle of the road. Second off, I don't see hardly any tire tracks. Yeah, there's a keep out sign, but it's old, and I'm not too worried about that. See, no real tracks. Looks like nobody's been down here. Let's go down it a ways. I don't know if this camera will show it, but the grass is all wet with morning dew because it's morning now. Everything out here is kind of nice and wet as we get closer I began to note that there's a house back there you got to assume it's not in use so take a closer look although there's plenty of nice woods we could have used that we ended up here and I'll show you a little more of that okay when Joe and I got here there was a guy sitting in a pickup truck just behind me he was actually on his way out of here so I stopped to talk to him. I said, hey, we're thinking about sleeping back here. Think anybody will care? And he says, no. He says, this house belongs to his boss who just sold it to the truck stop. It's not been through ESCO, and they're going to tear it down. <laughs> he says, nobody's going to care. I said, really? Maybe we'll just stay on the porch. He said, yeah, nobody's going to care. So, which I probably would have anyway, because it's obvious by looking through the window that the house has been abandoned a long time. There's so many abandoned houses in Georgia. So let's take a look at these beautiful accommodations that we got here. This is after the shower. Uh, we took at the truck stop. We came back here to set up and relax. And you can see our camp. Many years ago while I was working at a carnival, um, think trying to be a carny, <laughs> I was a fiasco. But I was working with a guy there that was a homeless guy and the guy was a prick. But um, they had hired a homeless, local homeless guy. One of the things he told me was if he sleeps under a tree, he doesn't get dew. And if he sleeps out in the open, he does. And it's that was that little stupid piece of information has served me very well. If you can get under just a little tree or anything, you wake up with your camp dry. Otherwise, you step out in the water. Maybe you don't want to wait to dry your camp out and you end up putting it away wet. But in any case, if you can get something above you, you'll stay dry. And we just happened on this, and it's a great place. The concrete um, keeps the dirt out and helps knock the mosquitoes down. The mosquitoes really aren't too bad here yet. So let's take a look at our beautiful accommodation. Joe got the corner over there over there while I, of course... Hey, Joe. Uh, this thing ain't picking up too good. While I, of course, took the best... What I thought was the best spot. Comfortable home still. I love that 
that particular camp. <clears throat> Joe's over here playing on his phone, which I guess I'm doing too right now. And this is our accommodations, and this is our view. Let's see if I can get a shot in that window. Okay, this is looking through the window behind my bike. I don't have any desire to go in there. But you can see from looking inside that nobody lives here for a long time. Out behind the house we're staying in. And uh, let's take a look at it. It just happens to be here. He took a walk and found it. This is it, right behind our place. Joe likes to meditate. He's going to spend a few minutes here before we go. And uh, we're getting pretty close to packed up. Uh, I want to say that for me, my personal experience, in order to make road life work long term, um, it was pr probably after the first couple years, I realized I was going to have to, personally for me, I was going to have to get a better home and I was going to have to learn to make this more comfortable. So the object here is to try to take as much of the road weariness out of the ride as possible. That's my objective. And get as much pleasure into the ride as possible. And so I employ many little tricks that I've learned over the years to make that happen. And uh, as you can see on this ride, I've used quite a few of them. And I don't know if any of them will work for you. There's, of course, a bunch more. So um, that's what I've had to do. And once... Once I got that going, um, it became so much easier. I took that, that Robbie, she'd ridden the freights, the rails. She'd been a freight train hobo for eight years. And I took her on a trip because she was so interesting. She came out to my camp and she was just at home there because she was just used to, you know, living like some similar to what I do. And so I took her on a trip across um, Florida. I'll put a link to that story in the drop down box below. So we took two weeks, cruised across Florida, and stayed in different camps and did a lot of fun things. And uh, in one camp she told me, she said uh, something that I really appreciated. She said, you've taken the hardship out of this, you know, because we were living in this, we were staying in this relaxed, easy camp. And uh, that was my intention from the gate, to try to do that as much as is possible. I can't get it out completely. But um, living a hardship ride of sleeping on picnic tables in a park and all that is okay, even for a few months. But for year after year, in my case, I had to make it in, you know, a reasonable life that I could come home and enjoy my home and relax and be able to get clean. I mean, we just got a shower at that truck stop and, uh, you know, have some friends and some purpose making this art for you guys. I guess videos, art, I do writing too. Is, is a good purpose. I really enjoy that. And so um, that's my experience with it, and that's what I've sought to do, is to try to take the hardship out. Um, many, I know, will ride hard and go like bats out of hell and, and put a lot of hardship in, I think. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. I want to try to get it out, make it easy, make it relaxing, make it enjoyable, make it pleasurable. And uh, that's been my objective. Okay, so we're, I brought my coffee. I always just bring coffee in a bottle and drink it at room temperature in the morning. It's easy. I get it at the gas station or the truck stop. And it uh, only takes a half a cup to get used to it, and then it's no big deal. But anyway, if you wanted hot coffee, we're in walking distance of the truck stop, obviously. And we're going to hang around here this morning, drink coffee, probably bullshit, maybe play on our phones, back slowly, eventually get out of here. The afternoon's been a little hot but not that bad. There are shorts and a baseball hat to keep the sun off my face and it's been pretty good. It's not extremely hot. And uh, we'll be on our way and just as soon as we feel like it. Cheers. Joe thinks my abandoned house is rickety. He thinks it looks dangerous. Looks kind of fucked. I don't know what he's talking about. Oh, yeah. Well, let's see. Well, it's an old one. I'm mean, probably not going to be too interesting, but because it's two stories, I want to look at. Teen fiend. Oh, somebody locked the door. Let's just use the other door. 
Yeah, I knew this place wouldn't be too interesting. Mm-hmm. Like the boards have held up well. Yeah, we knew this one is gonna be a really old one. But still. No, they don't make them like this anymore. Look at this here porch. This must have been really oh look at a couch. It must have been really nice when it was happening. Look at this, this is like another house out back. Yeah. Hell, I could almost put my tent up out here. Oh, yeah. Can you get your bike in there? Mm -hmm. well or something over here. Really? Yeah. Jesus Christ, you fall down that thing. Yeah. Up the spooky old stairs. Totally dig this bedroom with all its windows. Look at them all. Then it goes right to this one. So what? To get to to get down the stairs, you got to go through this bedroom. You got to come from this one. Go through the other one. Hmm. <clears throat> so you'd have to come out of here, go through your brother's bedroom and downstairs. So I guess this is the big brother's room. I can't find any plumbing in this old house. I have electrical socket. Which was probably done later. The only plumbing I can find is this plastic PVC. Which it looks like they were either trying to put plumbing into the house when they stopped. When the place was left. Or... It doesn't look to me like they got it in all the way. Because they have a toilet and a shower in here, but no plumbing at all. There's no plumbing anywhere except for that, what we just saw. So I think the house is older than plumbing. We're going to start a show called This Old House. It's so concludes our exploration of this place. Joe and I have arrived in Myrtle Beach early. And today is the first weekend, Saturday. I'm supposed to work, but nobody's here yet. But let's take a look. I'm working for Randy again, doing the mobile mechanics thing, changing tires mostly. And I always park out back here because I get shade under this tree. All us vendors are in that building. So this guy does something with boats. But this used to be the broken spoke bar. And I don't know what changed, changed hands, but they will have band and entertainment this place will get really packed up okay we're just gonna go inside up in here these guys are getting ready getting ready for the crazy thing that's gonna get ready to happen that's getting ready to happen Take a look at where I'm working, back here in the corner. Bunch of tires, jammed in here. That's where I'll be. But it's slow, everybody's sitting around bullshit, and the vendors are like a subculture. Hello guys, how do your fans? Country. Good morning, Scotty. Good morning, country. Welcome to Myrtle Beach. Yeah, vendors are kind of a subculture. You know, getting a tire. Fortunately for him, I had to work in tires, so he's gonna like get free labor. We're gonna put that on backwards, lift the front end. No, it ain't good yet. I'm gonna have to help him. Joe has to be the adult today. He's fortunate that he has friends that'll let him use their crap. It's really slow still. Uh, that's why I had him come in today. The rally hasn't really started yet. 
and he's they've discontinued that tire or something and so he's gotten it dirt cheap it's a continental and this is going to cost him less than half of what retail would be you happy huh <laughs> fuckers taking advantage of our hospitality these yuppie guys with these painted these uh Powder coat rim, easy to scratch, right? Right. It's a yuppie thing. 